Now you're not going to believe this. I pulled such a bonehead move, I can scarcely believe it myself. Connected the AC to the wrong side of the drive. When I flipped the breaker, I heard the distinct sound of capacitors blowing up. A distinct pop, pop. Well, on the bright side, I get to take it apart and see if I can fix it. Well, welcome back, gentlemen, and I say gentlemen because I guarantee you there is not a woman on the entire planet that is watching a GS2 vector drive tear down on YouTube. So here's the GS2 from Automation Direct that I got uh, installed on my little Boxford lathe. Oh, when I bought the one for the Boxford lathe, I also bought another one uh, just in case, and I went to use it for running the rod mill and I was in a rush, I connected it all up, that, that I've done it a million times, you know the deal. Having a couple wobbly pops, plugged it in, pop, nothing. So I killed the drive, I went back to see what I had done wrong and I connected it up backwards. Now after the initial shock of my complete and utter stupidity, I decided to take it apart since I had such good luck with the Chinese drive, fixing the Chinese drive, and I thought I'd take this one apart and see what made it tick. Maybe uh, maybe we could fix it, especially with the help of the guys on the practicalmachinist.com forum, which is the best VFD forum on the internet. Uh, there's guys on there, super smart guys, way smarter than I am, and we're going to take this apart, see what's wrong with it, see if we can fix it. Well, you've likely guessed by now that I'm no rocket surgeon, but I'm not afraid to take things apart, especially when they're already broken. So if you want to learn more about uh, troubleshooting your vector drive, your uh, VFD, your variable frequency drive, your inverter, whatever you want to call it, your motor drive, um, I have previously fixed a Chinese drive and gone into more detail and there's more detail on the blog so if you want to you just check out the blog but here's the 30 second rundown of vector drives it's the Dave Cad version of a variable frequency drive you have three input phases we're only using one single phase here at the house 240 volts 220 volts whatever goes through the DC rectifier onto the DC bus plus minus uh, filtering caps which uh, smooth out the input voltage and then goes to the IGBT which is insulated gate uh, bipolar transistor and this turns the DC into switches off and on real quick and turns it into three phase out. Now you got the front panel plugged into the control board. We got a couple of auxiliary relays here, a bunch of terminals for different things, uh, digital inputs, digital outputs, relay contacts, all that sort of stuff. Pretty typical looking circuit board. I got a MCU here, a microcontroller unit. Lots of I.O. pins and here we've got the clock for the MCU. Got a bunch of capacitors, the connectors, ferrite choke, got some comms. Now at first glance, there's nothing wrong with this, there's nothing burned up, no smoke let out, the caps, the vented caps are all uh, still solid, nothing loose, nothing broken, I'll put that aside. And here we have the power board, we got inputs, outputs, brake, terminals, uh, we've got a little transformer here for control voltage. And we've got spades for the DC bus here. So when you when you take this apart, the first thing you want to find is your DC bus. And as soon as you find your DC bus, you can do all your troubleshooting of your um, caps. And you also need to find your DC bus in order to troubleshoot your in to troubleshoot your inputs and to troubleshoot your outputs. Got some small caps here, typical stuff, some varistors. Had a look at this, nothing blown up in here. Now this is um, this is the IGBT module. This is an Infineon module and this is what's faulty. 
so I had to look for this part number and I found the part number I can order it but it's an obsolete part and it's 80 bucks it's 50 bucks from Hung Low Charlie but if I was gonna buy it I would spend the 80 bucks and buy it however this drive is only a hundred and twenty bucks so it's not worth the risk and I kind of ripped it out I wasn't I wasn't too gentle the board's a little warped there So here we can see we just got a big heat sink on the underside, a little fan here, so forced air, and here are the main caps. None of them are blown, so that's good. Let's take the module apart. Okay, so we got some goo on there, and we can see the Magic Blue Smoke Monster tried to get out, but got caught in the goo. So clearly this is the problem. Something blue in here. And just so happens that JST on the Practical Machinist forum was kind enough to send me this photo or post this photo. So we've got UT rectifiers. I have no idea what that is for. Flyback diodes, uh, IGBTs, brake diode. So here's the input side, here's the output. All these pins up top must be uh, control pins for the various IGBTs and all that stuff. This module is a little bit different than our photo, but it looks like this area crapped out. So anyone that's a little more familiar with these modules than I am will be able to tell at first glance what failed. I'd say any of the smaller diodes failed. All of them, this guy failed. And you can see the, uh, the effects of the magic smoke monster here because it's been captured by this goo. I'm gonna try and take this goo out, see what we can see. Ew! I got all the snot out of there. They still can't really see. So I'll pull out the USB microscope. We'll have a nice close look at that. I'm just getting this crappy little USB, $30 USB microscope set up here. And here's one of the fried diode patches. You can see it got quite hot by the cock end on the old uh, lead there, melted right off. So there's one fried diode. There's another fried diode. Well, just bear with me and we're gonna take a trip across the board to Output Town. We moved over here to Output Town and this is the output that wasn't connected to the, one of the two hots of the single phase. We can see that the leads from the pin going to the bare copper board are uh, still intact. I'm going to move over here to where the diode blew up. So there's the blown up diode and we're going to move along the trace to where the two leads solder onto the bare copper from the input pin that was connected. And you can see that they're completely vaporized. The reason it failed is because those things vaporized. I put 50 amps to them backwards. The diodes vaporized and the leads going to the PCB traces vaporized. And that's why you cannot connect up a GS2 drive from Automation Direct backwards. Because there's no protection for the IGBT module diodes. Lesson learned. Well thanks for watching. Until next time, keep your stick on the ice.